is Sergeant Josh. Welcome to the Well-Rounded Warrior. Thanks for watching. Realize I haven't been around for a while, but I've uh, been busy doing life things, and that's okay. So uh, you have probably seen on the internet about how the government is going to try and ban these inexpensive bell fang radios, and you probably went to um, you probably went to Amazon and you probably bought a couple, and now you don't know what to do. But that's okay because we're gonna get you spun up. So what do you need to communicate on amateur radio frequency, i.e. the 70 centimeter or the two meter bands? First of all, you need a radio. Uh, you can just pick pick a radio, pick a bell thing. Uh, it needs to be a dual band radio, preferably, to do what I'm about to show you. These are the most common, these are the most inexpensive, and uh, so this is what I've chosen to show you. So one radio is good, uh, two radios is more gooder. So, I have two radios because I have a set of frequencies loaded in this one and we're going to transfer them over and I'll show you how to do that. So, second thing you need is obviously a programming cable. Uh, this is going to facilitate the transfer of the frequencies. Alright, now that's the obvious stuff and the laptop and I'll show you how to download Chirp here in a second. So, here's the other thing that you need that a lot of people don't want to, you know, say, hey, you need to do this unless you're a total ham radio nerd and they're out there. So you need the AA, or excuse me, the ARRL, -A -R -R -L, Ham Radio License Manual 3rd Edition, right? This is on Amazon. It's like 25 bucks, required reading. And it's not so you can get your license, because I don't really care if anybody ever gets their license. This shows you how to operate on the amateur uh, radio, the ham radio frequencies. So uh, it's a lot of just basic electrical stuff. And if you've ever had any kind of combo class, it should come uh, second nature. It's really easy. So, uh, all right, we've covered the basics. Now we're going to uh, show you how to do what you need to do, and I'll walk you all the way through it. All right, so we have gotten on our computer, and we have went to everyone's favorite website, Google. All right, so we type in Chirp Radio Software. That is going to take us to chirp.danplanet.com. And we're going to click on this first link, get it. Now we've got to scroll down here, and what we want is uh, the latest Windows version, because we have Windows, unless you're one of those weirdos and has Apple stuff. All right, so we need two things. We need the installer, and we need the actual Win32 zip file. So we're gonna go ahead and download that, you'll see uh, that it is dated uh, 2019-0718 which is uh, basically last month so this is the newest uh, installer and the same uh, newest Chirp Daily um, package so we'll download that and then we'll download the installer and then uh, we'll go to do, 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 do show in folder alright so we need to extract this. So we'll just uh, right click on that, extract all. It'll say, where do you want to extract it? We're just going to go ahead and put it right in the same folder. All right. And that is going to be ready for us when we get our installer downloaded. Well, conveniently enough, our installer is downloaded, which is a executable file. So we're just going to go ahead and double click that. And because I have stupid HP, it's going to ask me if I want to remove protection and open. Always yes. Yes, we are going to allow this app to make changes because it's going to install a program. All right. Uh, just click next to the wizard and you're going to agree to this uh, GNU general public license. Install. And it's going to do its thing. It's going to take just a minute. Should be pretty quick. All right. We have finished. And we're done. So we'll go ahead and exit out of all that. And there's our app. Chirp. File, you can do whatever you need to do. All right, that's step one. All right, now the easiest way to do this is to uh, do one of two things. You can either have another radio like I have that's already programmed 
or have somebody email you what they call a CSV file, which is just a Microsoft Excel file, and uh, you can import that, and it is not specific to the kind of radio. Uh, I'll show you that more here in a second. So uh, we're going to go ahead and open up Chirp. All right, we've opened Chirp, and what we want to do is we want to download all the frequencies out of this radio. Now, as awesome as it would be to just uh, download the freaks and put them in our new radio, we can't do that because this radio's um, programming is a little bit different than this radio's. So basically, it's like you can't take a computer out of the or can't take a hard drive out of this HP and just throw it in a Panasonic com computer and expect it to work. There are different programming areas in that stuff and you just can't make it work. So all you can do is take the information off of one and put it on the other. I'll show you how to do that. Step one, we need to plug it in. Super easy, right? Turn it on. Full volume. Plugged in, turned on, full volume. And we want it on a, on a, uh, on a frequency that's not going to transmit. So I think we got one there on TAC-8. So what we want to do is, uh, want to go to radio, download from radio. It's up here at radio. Okay, so COM-3, Baofeng, UV-5 X-ray. All right, so this driver is experimental. Yeah, that's okay, proceed yes. It gives you instructions exactly what to do. Turn radio off, conduct or connect the cable, make sure the connector is firmly connected, blah, 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 just like what I told you to do. Okay? Cannot open COM port 3. Let's try that again. Let's do COM 6, because I am on a different serial or on a different USB. And as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and change that. Make sure we're not receiving. Try again. Yes. Okay. All right. It is cloning. It is downloading everything out of this radio. You see the lights. It's sucking all the information out. And we wait. Awesome, we have downloaded all the frequencies out of this radio, cool. We're done with this. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off, unplug our cable, set this radio, which is our old radio, off to the side. This is a Baofeng UV5 X-ray, which is just pick a number or letter after. We're gonna go ahead and go to File here, Export. We're gonna export this as a CSV file. So this is a test. Go ahead and put that test wherever you want to put it. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the desktop so I can see it. Save. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and take our new radio. We're going to X out of here because we've already saved this, this file here. Uh, nope, we don't want to save that. We're going to plug in our new radio just like before. says welcome you see I have something trying to transmit on that frequency well I don't want that Two, six, five. okay plug that back in it does its thing all right again same I'm gonna go ahead and go to radio download from radio this is taking this specific file um, and gonna, it's gonna make its own file. Yes, okay, there, it's cloning this radio. It's this specific loadout for this radio. All we're doing is programming frequencies. All right, so you can see nothing is loaded in here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this file, we're gonna go to import, and we're gonna go ahead and grab that test Test CSV right here. Double clicked on that. And these are all of our frequencies. Click OK. 
it's going to go ahead and auto populate all this stuff. And in the case of uh, repeaters, like I have the short mount repeater here, it's going to go ahead and then uh, do the offset, the mode, power, all of this. All right, so now that we have imported our CSV uh, file to here, right, we still have a little bit of work to do. Uh, we need to go to our settings, and I'll just give you my basic settings. And uh, if I don't remember them, I'll just go ahead and refer to my old radio that has these settings. So I like to keep my squelch low on one, so I pick up about everything that I can. Uh, battery saver, I don't believe I messed with. Battery saver, backlight, timeout, that's up to you. Timeout timer 60 seconds. Uh, display mode A, I like to keep that on name so I can see the channel name, i.e. GMRS6, short mountain repeater, or any of the other repeaters that I might hit. So I like name, frequency, these colors don't really matter, just they need to be three different colors. Roger beep, I hate that. Do not, just turn it off. Advanced settings, Vox sensitivity is off because we don't have our voice operated controls. Uh, I don't uh, I don't like to do that. Dual watch, I do like to enable that because that will allow you to enable to that will allow you to watch both channels that you have uh, pulled up on your radio. Uh, let's see, uh, transmit priority doesn't matter. Alarm mode, uh, we'll go with tone English, obviously because they will speak Chinese to you. Uh, we want English. Scan resume. I don't believe I've messed with that. Busy channel lockout, nope. Automatic key lock, nope. Broadcast FM radio, yes. Squelch tail eliminate, yes. Uh, okay, so these are all good. Other settings. I don't know what most of these do except the power on message. And I like to say something dumb like, um, Go home alpha boy, because why not? UHF transmit, VHF transmit, enable, of course, there. Um, these are pretty straightforward. Um, this is where it starts. FM radio preset. Now, um, I like to put this to 99.7, because that is our news radio channel uh, in Nashville. DTMF settings, doesn't really matter. Service settings, never really had to mess with any of this. Now that we have done what we did, we'll go ahead and go back to radio, upload to radio, COM6, Bailfang, UV5, X-ray, and click OK. Yep, I'm tired of seeing this, I know what to do. It's gonna go ahead and upload all that new information to the radio. All right, when it's done, you'll see the radio reset. It'll power on, power, go home, dum-dum, GMRS5, okay. All right, so you can see that we have uh, a name here and no name here. So we can fix that. We'll go back into our menu, and I'm going to have to turn this voice off. And the beep off. Seriously annoying. Voice, English. Off. Go away. All right, MDFB, we're going to go ahead and change that to name. All right, so apparently I missed that in the upload, but that's okay. Go ahead and exit, and go to AB. There you go. So now we have all of our pre-programmed frequencies. In this case, it's a short mountain repeater. There's nobody talking on it right now. Thumb through all these. We'll get to a NOAA frequency. I know will work. All right, there you go. It's literally that easy. Uh, if you have any problems, go ahead and shoot an email to thewellroundedwarrior at gmail.com. If you live in Middle Tennessee, shoot an email to thewellroundedwarrior at gmail.com, and I will send you the CSV that has uh, all the NOAA frequencies, all the GMRS, FRS, MERS, uh, the repeaters, and I have some TAC frequencies, marine, uh, green dot, and I have some law enforcement frequencies in there as well. So, uh, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, hope you finally get a, a video from me. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit like. 
If you'd like to see it again, go ahead and click subscribe. And just remember when avoidance, deterrence, and de-escalation fail, a higher rate of fire usually doesn't.